We magnify your name, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And God's children say, Amen. I like to sound a note of warning from the beginning that what is coming is unusual and I know I am under authority and I'm going to deliver his word as he has given it to me. You know by now, if some of you don't know, but you will begin to know that this is Jesus global ecclesia where the Holy Ghost is the apostle, is the teacher, is the seer, is the prophet, is everything. And we are under his authority. And so be prepared. It's going to start on one note and I can assure you it will shift you to another note because he is determined to feed you with bread from heaven that you most probably have never tasted before. Jesus wants to change your theology again tonight. And under normal circumstances, some of the things you are going to be hearing could have been held back from you. But according to the word of God, like Apostle Paul said, I will not hold back from you the things that will be profitable to you. And like the audio I sent in the discipleships group, my little children in whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you, my job is to form Christ in you so that you can be a giant killer, to fight the battles of the Lord and put all the armies of the aliens to flight and the generations of the giants shall be brought under our feet and God will be glorified. The knowledge of the glory of God is going to cover the earth as the water covers the sea. Without missing my words, my assignment is to ensure every embarrassment to the ecclesia the church of the living God, the army of God, the nation of God globally, by the intimidation of the generation of the Anakites, the Jebusite, the giants, be brought to naught. And with my five stones, as he reveals them from, from time to time, you will see us using the same sword of Goliath to remove his head. And all the generation of giants are going to be exterminated. We are extinguishing their generation forever in the name of Jesus. So I am an oracle of God tonight as a man sent by God with the gospel of the kingdom in the spirit and the power of David to raise for him a, an army of a holy nation of kings and priests to subdue the devil and enforce the will of the Father on earth. And he commanded me in to raise him men in five category to raising men in politics and public administration raising men in business innovation and entrepreneurship raising men professional sectors and raise women for him to become custodians of destinies of their children and that of their husband while fulfilling their own destinies and to raise frontline soldiers as ministers of the gospel and supportive ministers for him to take the front line in the in the in the battles of the lord while fostering the unity of the body of christ in love and i am not disobedient to the heavenly vision so we are in part five of kingdom rituals for and we are dealing with understanding and maximizing the riches of god the seven riches of god and i know that i may not get there today to the nitty-gritty of what the list of these seven things are but i may touch on them because the Father is excited to bring you closer to Him. Because we are all seated at a long table in the temple of God. I can see all of us like the pictures you will see in the boardroom. And Jesus Christ is at the smaller end of the table. Sitting in His royalty. Hosting you and I tonight. And He's the one teaching us tonight. We are all seated in this big boardroom and the throne of the father is with us anything can happen in this realm this is where we are all seated and i can see each one of you seated in your different position and according to the ranking that god has given you in this ministry i can see myself seated very next to jesus and on the other side is your mother i can see her seated next to jesus on the other side and I won't mention the names of the people I'm seeing next and next and next. That Jesus did not tell James and John who is going to sit next to him. 
so that you don't start fighting. Come on, say amen. But the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need, all your need, except none, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. All your needs, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What does it mean? God is a supplier of all our needs. God the Father is the supplier of all our needs. And he does so in his own capacity, sovereignty as God, according to the riches of his glory, according to his riches in glory, according to his level of riches. That's how he supplies your need. <laughs> and mark the word supply. It is a supply. If there is going to be a supply, I'm sure some of you did economy, there must be a demand. Am I talking to you, child of God? If there is going to be a supply, then there is an effective demand. And whatever you are demanding is never going to be out of stock. Who is hearing what I'm talking about? <laughs> Come and give God praise tonight. Nothing will ever be out of stock. Nothing will ever be out of stock with God according to his capacity in glory in the realm of the spirit and it's going to come by Christ Jesus only by Christ Jesus and what does that mean we need to break it down by Christ Jesus say with me by Christ Jesus what does by Christ Jesus means it means in Christ in him or in other words through the office of Jesus through the knowing acknowledgement of you being in situ in Christ, according to his riches in glory, made available to us by Christ Jesus. Made available to us by Christ Jesus. Are you still here? How is it made available to us by Christ Jesus? According to the riches of our inheritance in Christ Jesus. I'm trying to break it down for you to understand how God supplies our need in his glorious riches, in his royalty, in his more than sufficiency. But those riches are supplied only when you are in Christ. Those riches are based on your righteousness in Christ and by the established covenant promises and inheritance through the blood of Jesus Christ. According to the glorious riches of God Christ, that Christ has made us to inherit in him. So the riches of his glory are the exceeding great and precious promises according to 2 Peter 1.4. They are the better promises that is established upon better covenant of which Jesus is the mediator and we are coming back to deal with the issue of mediator. They are the promises, the better things that the blood of sprinkling, the blood of Jesus speaks what am I saying? I'm telling you, there is nothing within the better covenant with better promises that God will ever deny you and mark you. No matter the best that they got in the old covenant, the least in the new covenant is better than the best in the old covenant. The riches are the things that makes us partakers of it is of his divine nature like we were discussing the first day that you are divine you became divine because of the promises inclusive in the promises is your divinity <laughs> this inheritance jesus won for you has made you divine in nature praise god so just be careful that no worshiping you in your village <laughs> because you begin to do things that will be amazing and then men will want to start worshipping you like Jesus Christ. They now want to make him king of bread. <laughs> when they see your prosperity, people will be thronging around you and say, we want to make you king of money. So you better remember how it came and remain humble. Hallelujah. It is therefore guaranteed that these promises are also what the word of God called the spiritual blessings. That we are already blessed with all spiritual blessings. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in the realm of the spirit in the glorious realm and these promises are the spiritual blessings and it is within the context of these spiritual blessings that whatever be your needs shall be met within the capacity of god and the capacity of god is an unlimited one so it guarantees you therefore there is no need of yours that will not be met 
According to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and find the spiritual blessing and find the word that provoked the spiritual blessings and find the mind of the Father to be made manifest on earth and the angelic manifestation called grace that will follow you to execute that which you have received in, during ascension in the presence of the Father to help in the time of need so if there is a need then you there is a grace to meet that need and the grace that meet that need is your spiritual blessing and when god is supplying all your needs he does so by releasing grace to make it manifest after you have successfully brought your perfect faith to manifestation after you have successfully Fulfill the protocols of perfect faith. You have received the word from the Lord. You have imagined it. You created what you desire with that word. Whether it is your personal desire or what God wants to birth on earth. If it is your personal desire, it must be in accordance to the promises of the new covenant. Successful faith releases executing grace. Successful faith releases executing grace. The response Effective spirit, angels representing the grace of God. So when you need money, God is not going to rain down money. God will send you the angel of money who will manifest the money here on earth. Zagira bo sahata, sakute keshikala mahande keskuba. Ye are my children, and my love for you is beyond the sand that is on the seashore. The love I have for you is immeasurable. Only if you can understand the rituals that my son, David, teaches you, then you will make my glory manifest indeed on earth. I am seeking sons who will understand the truth that you are learning, that they might walk like me on the earth. Says the Spirit of the living God. Come and say, I will learn and walk like God on the earth. Glory to God. We learn and walk like God on the earth. This is what I mean when I talk about the manifestation of my sons. As I'm speaking to you, I'm looking at the Father. The Father is talking everything you are hearing from my mouth. When I desired and desire the sons of God in the end of the world to manifest, to show forth my glory, but they cannot show it without understanding the rituals and how to be like gods on the earth. And you are so blessed that I have ordained you and chosen you Together with my son, that you might be manifesto of the glory of the Father. And I give you my commitment today that I shall indeed manifest my glory through you. As many of you who will take responsibility of rituals. So it is therefore guaranteed if you are in Christ, all these spiritual blessings of God that are called his riches in glory are all yours by inheritance. Child of God, we have inherited God. You have inherited all the riches of God. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. If you are a son of God, you have access to everything God has and God is ready as he just spoke to you by prophetic word. He is ready to lavish his riches on you for all the promises of God that he made with the Lord Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world in agreement to the covenant terms and conditions that when he offered himself that all the riches of God will become your inheritance and those riches are the promises of God. He said they are in Christ. That's why by Christ Jesus. In Christ they are yea. If you are not in Christ, those promises are not yours. God will supply oh, your needs. Your wants are different from your needs. That's why the part of the just is like a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. Whatever be the need that we glorify him, whatever be the need that you need to foster your destiny, his purpose, his life on earth that is living through you, they shall be supplied. They shall be supplied. Already you know there are needs you should never pray for. But you should have desire as a son. And that is what makes you have the faith of a little child. Your desire brings you to the faith of a little child. And then the father will look at the covenant agreement with Jesus. Is your desire in tandem with what the covenant says? If the covenant already owes the riches for you, he 
it's yours. You cannot be denied. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for all the promises of God, all the riches of God to supply all your needs are in him, yea, and in him, Christ. Amen. Why? Unto the glory of God by us. <laughs> God wants the glory. The agreement with Jesus is that I will release the riches and I will be glorified. 1 Corinthians 3, 21 to 23. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. This was a statement Paul was making to the Corinthian church who excels in all things. <laughs> some are saying I'm for Apollo, some are saying I'm for, I'm for Paul. How Paul happens, he has to bring them to normalcy. God has gifted men differently. Apollo was a man that is mighty in scripture, but with all his mightiness in scriptures, he still needed to be taught properly the ways of the Lord by two disciples who are couples, Priscilla and Aquila. So, it, you may seem to have certain grace, certain gift of God upon your life that outshines many. He does not make you better than them, right? It is the way God has chosen to use you. I've taught you on this. And you still need to be subject to discipleship. <laughs> You still need to be subject to discipleship. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world, listen carefully, or the entire world, or life itself, or death, or things present or things to come, all are yours. Because ye are Christ, and Christ also belongs to God. So it is all in one. And that includes the devil. I won't forget to always tell you that. That includes the devil and all the demons. They are all yours. You can... All you need to do is tell them what to do and they will do it. Tell the devil what to do and he will do it. Jesus Christ said, cast him out and he will be cast out. Kick him and he will be kicked. Slap him and he will be slapped. Stop allowing any devil to mesmerize your life. You have power and I'm going to prove it to you now. I want to bring you into a light that will shake you to your foundation. Are you ready for this child of God? Romans 14, 11. Listen carefully. The devil can never. The devil can never refuse the name of Jesus. Praise God. <laughs> I was blessed by David Oedepo Jr. I, I saw one of his clips. I was so blessed. He said, the name of Jesus is a signature in the spirit. <laughs> and when you use somebody's signature illegally, it is called fraud. Is that correct? I may not quote it exactly the way he quoted it, but I was blessed. I'm sharing this with you. And so when you use the name of Jesus illegally, it is called what? Fraud, right? And when you use the signature rightly, it is going to be for your favor. Is that correct? Are you with me, child of God? Is that correct? Very correct. Great. So let me now tell you what, I, what I'm trying to say to you. The devil recognizes those who have the legal right to use the name of Jesus. Listen. The sons of Scepha, they use the name of Jesus fraudulently. And they, you know, when you use the name of Jesus, you can use somebody's signature illegally, you can go to jail. <laughs> so, sons of Scepha, they use the name of Jesus illegally. They were dealt with for fraudulence in the spirit. <laughs> Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. And so, the demons gang up. All the demons that have suffered in the hand of Jesus, they now call a demon party. They dealt with them. Hear me, child of God. The foundation of God standard sure, having this seal, having this signature. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And what is the emblem? Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ stop giving their mind to evil thought. That's iniquity. Stop conceiving evil imagination into your subconsciousness. Stop it. Let everyone that call upon the name of the Lord never allow their heart to conceive evil. That is what distinguishes you between righteousness and iniquity. And when you are that kind of a man that your heart, your subconscious mind, is subject only to the word of God, you now have what is called a pure heart and a clean hands. Then you are ready to use the name of Jesus as a spiritual signature. And whatever you sign, whatever Jesus signs for you, God cannot refuse it. Whatever Jesus signs, no devil can refuse it. Listen. This, this will bless you. Romans chapter 14, verse 11. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Philippians 2, 8 
11. I'm combining these two scriptures to you right now. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Follow me, child of God. Don't miss this. If you miss this, you miss a great lot. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, listen carefully, at the name of Jesus or by the name of Jesus or whatever as the signature of the name of Jesus, wherever the name of Jesus goes, news must not stand straight. They must bow of things in heaven, of things in earth and things underneath the earth. As I begin to talk about this, I am seeing in the realm of the spirit, demons bowing. I can see them literally bowing. And I see some demons that are hiding in your body, bowing and living. In the name of Jesus, I see sicknesses, diseases of all kinds, bowed and left you. Whatever be that demon that has stood in now in your body, they can't stand this name. Bow and live in the name of Jesus. Listen. Hey. Come on, look, Azala. Poverty, bow, live in the name of Jesus. Indebtedness, financial affliction, barrenness, spirit of hunger, spirit of foolishness, all gangs of demons anywhere around you. I command them to bow and live in the name of Jesus and never return in Jesus' name. If you believe, say amen. You will now say your amen in areas when you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in the earth and things underneath the earth. May I announce to you today, <laughs> one of the greatest riches of God is Jesus, right? Jesus is an asset for God, right? Is that correct? Listen, now listen. He said, if you are children, then you are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. What did Jesus inherit? I've taught you before. One of the one major thing God gave Jesus as an inheritance, apart from all the glory he has had from the beginning, was that he gave him a name. He also gave him to become the head of all things. We're coming back to that. But God gave Jesus a name. God gave Jesus a name that is above every name in every realm. And when the name of Jesus is used or mentioned anywhere in any realm, nails must bow and tongue must confess that Jesus is the master, is the commander general. Whatever he says stands. And now listen. So if you are not the one that is going for Jesus, Jesus now sent you, like I will show you, as my father sent me, even though, even though sent are you. Jesus is the one that sent you now. The life you are now living, you are living by the faith of the Son of God. You are living by the instruction of Jesus. You are living by the direction of the Holy Ghost. Listen, child of God, wherever you go, whatever you say, as long as it is what Jesus is saying, no power can stop it. That's why you need to learn from Jesus. He said, the works that you see me do, they are not my works, they are my father's works. And... He will show you more works that you may know that he has endorsed me. And he said, the son can of his own self do nothing, but whatsoever he sees the father does. The same he does. He can't say a thing unless he hear God say it. Do you know why there are no miracles in your ministry? Do you know why there are no wonders? Do you know why angels are not working with you? Because you are preaching your own message. Do you know why your business is not flourishing? Because you are doing the wrong one. If you are doing the business that God commands you to do, if you are in the city God wants you to be, you will eat the good of the land. Child of God, hear me today. The reason for failure of Christianity is inability to ascend, to navigate the mind of the Father, to know the perfect will of Jesus and connect the perfect will of the Holy Ghost to be in the right place at the right time and say the right thing at the right time. And the right thing at the right time are the words of Jesus. Because the Holy Ghost will not speak of himself. 
whatsoever you shall receive of Christ, it will reveal to you. That is why when you are praying in the Holy Ghost, I've taught you and I've given some of you this book free of charge that you want supernatural benefit of speaking in tongues. Listen carefully. When you pray in tongues, you are interceding the intercession of Jesus now. You can never intercede amiss. That's why praying in tongues is your winning tools any time, any day. Pray in the Holy Ghost throughout the day. You can do it. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Come and say amen. amen. I want to say that again. Listen carefully. The reason for grand failure and it looks like the children of the devil are winning. It's because the children of righteousness are not doing the rituals the right way. The rituals of victory is your faith. And your faith is not in aloof. Your faith is in what the Lord says. If you go to do and to say what he has already said, he will confirm the word with signs following. Amen. When he came to me and said, it's time, build me a church without the wall. I said, Lord, what do you mean? <laughs> I woke up to my wife. I said, the Lord just spoke to me. He said, build me a church without the wall. And me and my wife, we were just one. And she was now becoming the interpreter of the Holy Ghost to me. I said, no, build me a church without walls. And by his grace, I was in some strategic fasting. Those six days for 40 days. And for 60 days, 70 days, I was going on non-stop. In fact, I lost count of the days after some time. I, I said, Lord, Kazaku. And I wasn't praying for church. I wasn't praying. I was praying to go for something else every day. Kazaku Taba. I go to his press at 9 p.m. And by midday, by 6 p.m. And by midnight, I'm there. And the whole night, many times I'm there. In his presence, I am seeking him. Look, child of God, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Some of you are looking for encounter. Encounter will encounter you in his presence. Create time for him. He will encounter you. <laughs> so it was in that season. In fact, I started with consistent worship for many days. Kazakura Bazaar. Which now... I think I got angry in the Holy Ghost and I moved it into long fasting. Nanazo Kazakadija is an experience that you can never forget. And he said, build me a church without a wall. And for this, I was like, what do you mean build me a church without a wall? And from his presence, he began to download it. That's why you are here. <laughs> so no matter that situation, you know why I know I will succeed? Now I am in the center of his will. Wake me up in the deepest sleep and say, Apostle, what's your calling? I will sing it to you. He called me to subdue the devil and to enforce the kingdom of God. Zakura Bazik. I will, I will sing it to you. And he gave me five cardinal areas to do it. While fostering the unity of the body of Christ in love, I will not miss my word for you. I will give you accuracy. I hate him. I heard him clearly. I remember as a young pastor, he will come to me. I have not called you to be a local champion. <laughs> I didn't raise you to pastor a local church. As a young boy, I didn't understand. But I kept seeking him. So when the appointed time come, I'll deal with you. Zakazura <laughs> Basaka. But what this ever thy hand find that to do? Do it with all your mind. Why you are waiting to know your destiny? The opportunity that God is affording you. Grab it with the two hands. Grab it. Your destiny will find you in faithfulness. You know why? Many of you are seeking to know. I've taught you this during understanding your destiny, right? But I will say it again. Many of you that are dodging responsibilities or you are allowing responsibility to lay fallow, you are delaying your destiny. Because God will prove your faithfulness to your destiny while you are being faithful to another man's destiny. He says, oh, we give you your own if you have not been faithful in that which is of another. You have made a member of the choir. We can't see you. Member of the usher. You are nowhere to be found. Running away from responsibility every day. Takazura. You are going to delay your destiny because your destiny will be activated and find you while you are being faithful with another man's destiny, you can't break the scriptures. 
You can't. Ah! I won't think twice. If it is the work of God, I'm there. Manzo paye ketekeya. There was a time they don't. I went to join the choir. I began to sing whether I have the voice to do it or not. I love this God. Kelly Mahada. Sakuta Yele Mateka Tashiba. They need the person to lead prayer. I am there. You need the person to lead praise and worship. I'm there. Somebody to sweep the church. I am there. Somebody to carry the, the mortar and the clay on the head and the brick. I am there. Destiny found me in the place of faithfulness. Destiny will find you in the place of faithfulness. And the way you are doing the work of God under somebody is a revelation to God how unserious you will be when he gives you your destiny. So he can take that destiny and give it to somebody else because of your irresponsibility. So children of God, hear the truth today. <laughs> it is required in steward that a man be found faithful. It's a requirement. Be faithful. Get the teaching in the catalog. You will learn more about this one. On the spirit of faithfulness. You want to know what your destiny is? Find a destiny that your destiny connects. You may not even know it's a connection of destiny. But your spirit connect, your spirit rest. Stay there until God brings you a word. Until God brings you a word. <laughs> hey, let him that have an ear hear what the spirit says to the church. Repent and be faithful. He that is unfaithful in that which is of another, who we give him his own. That's the question. Do you think God is God is God is prodigal? No. I won't say more than that. So let back to the name of Jesus. The, at the name of Jesus, every kneel of angels or demons or human will bow. And every tongue shall confess, even in hell, the name of Jesus. They will confess that Jesus is the Lord. He's the master of all. He's the commander of the universe. Come and say, I understand. If you understand, come and say, I understand. I understand. Who has understood? Emmanuel, because you are quick to respond to the interaction of the Spirit, the Lord has just added a new grace upon your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I say that by the Spirit of God. Your voice shall be heard on the global scale. You have just been elevated in the Holy Ghost. And not just you alone. Everyone whose spirits tear them up to do the same. Be impacted with spiritual elevation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. It, this is serious. You have just received something heavy and you will return to testify. And as many whose spirit is teared up, you are partaker of this impartation now. Don't forget where we are. The Father is the one talking to us. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Are you still with me? No devil can refute Jesus. Because in that, God is glorified. Wherever the name of Jesus is mentioned, God will, be, will get the glory. And so God wants all the glory. And so he will always honor the name of Jesus Christ. And you remember Jesus Christ said, When the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall glorify me. What does that mean? The Holy Ghost will make sure that nails are bowed. Tongues are confessed. When a righteous man uses the name of Jesus, it is a spiritual signature. And the Holy Ghost gets to work immediately. All the angels attend to this issue. You don't need to say it twice. All you need to do is to check your righteousness status. Once you have the righteousness status, whatever you say according to the covenant in the name of Jesus shall be delivered to you. But I wanted to show you something before I go. Listen, what is it? Kaza, thou hast magnified your word above all your names. Above all your names. God said he has magnified his word above all his name. I'm being slow with this right now for you to be able to catch a revelation. Psalm 138 verse 2. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth for you have magnified your word above all your name remember the riches of jesus christ the inheritance of jesus christ included his name so the name of jesus is part of the riches that we inherit and i will define to you subsequently 
the, the difference between riches, wealth, and all of that. And now, we are joint heirs in honing that name unreservedly. Unreservedly. And listen, the word of God, it did not say, Thou art magnify your words. One person, your word, a singular person, your word. <laughs> in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the word was made by him. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. Are you following me? So, the, and the word verse 14 was made flesh. Are you following me, child of God? The word was what? Made flesh. So, who is the word of God? Jesus. Who is the word of God, everybody? Jesus. So, who has God magnified above all? All his names, Jesus. And so, what has God magnified above all his name? And what are the names of God? The names of God talks about his character, his power, his attributes, his personality. We are coming down to deal with this. But hear this today. Kazalu Zakushki Alavasaka. Thank you for your peace, O oh God, in Jesus' name. The Bible says the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. And this word became magnified above not some of the name of God, all the names of God. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah El Shaddai, you know, Jehovah Rapha, Elohim, Elohim, Adonai. Whatever name you want to call God, there is a name that is above all those names. <laughs> and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sin. So the word was made flesh. What is the name of the word of God? Jesus. Jesus. And so God gave him a name that is above every other name of things in heaven, of things on earth. And God put all his name inside one name, which is called Jesus. God packaged all his name and put it in an envelope and called the name of that envelope Jesus. So whatever be the name of God you need per time is inside Jesus. So if you need money is inside jesus if you need whatever you think you need is inside jesus so when you say in jesus name the character the manifestation of god that you need for that situation will be responded to by the corresponding and responsible grace angels of god do you understand child of god do you understand do you understand child of god so the name of jesus is one of your greatest spiritual riches. <laughs> who, who caught that? Who caught that? Zakusi, anything you do or say in the name of Jesus, according to the established covenant, glorifies God. Because that was the agreement between Jesus and God. Whatever is done in my name, we glorify him. You will do it, I will do it, but I will get the glory. Deal. God is committed to make it happen. Guaranteed. And so anytime you see a situation and you say, in the name of Jesus, do you know why it will not happen? <laughs> why it will not happen are two reasons. One, <laughs> Holy Spirit, help me tonight. I say this, if he, want, if he wills, then we stop here tonight and continue tomorrow. But catch this. Catch this child of God. <laughs> I'm talking about the rich. The richness of the name of Jesus. The richness of the name of Jesus is that inside that name are all the miracles of God. When you say Jehovah El Shaddai, the provider. So when you say Jesus, inside that name is provision. <laughs> so my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. That those riches include the name of Jesus. The name, the name of Jesus is higher than any other name. It is not an ordinary name. It's the name that's full of power and grace. Hey, the name the name of Jesus It's higher than any other name It is not an ordinary name 
is the name that's full of power and grace. Oh, the name, the name, the name of Jesus is higher than any other name. It is not an ordinary name. It's the name that's full of power and praise. I don't know the name of your situation. As I sing this song, those situations are bowing. Circumstances are giving way. Weaknesses are being destroyed. Sicknesses are dying. Diseases are being cured. The name, the name of Jesus. Oh, is higher than any other name. It is not an ordinary name. It's the name that's full of power and praise. Oh, the name, the name, the name of Jesus. It's higher than any other name. It is not an ordinary name. It's the name that's full of power and praise. It is not an ordinary name. It's the name that's full of power and praise. That name, me, 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 not an ordinary name. It's the name that's full of power and praise. You can buy anything with the name of Jesus. You can own anything with the name of Jesus. You can become the president of your country with the name of Jesus. You can become captains of the industry in the name of Jesus. You don't need to shout it at the name, at the mention. All you need is the revelation you are getting today. What that name really means. What that name really means. The name of Jesus is one of the highest riches we have in Christ. And I'm coming back to break it down. Everything we are going to be discussing, you will realize... They are embedded in this name. His name. His name is higher. Your name is higher than any other name. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. Your name is higher than any other name. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. Your name is Lord. His name is higher than any other name. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is higher. Than any other name. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. How excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name, how excellent is the name of Jesus, how excellent is your name, oh Lord, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, Jesus. His name is working now. His name is healing you. His name is sorting you out. His name is gracing your life. Whatever be the needs of your life is being released now. Because my heart is pure. I've got the signature of his name. And then you will begin to understand from tomorrow. What it means that 
What things soever ye shall ask the Father in my name. Ayazuna. It means when you go to the place of prayer, listen, some of you can prove this and come back and testify. And for one hour, all you are saying is Jesus. 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 Ayavasuka Ayavasakataba. You don't have utterances. You are just saying Jesus. Ah! You are calling the whole heaven and earth, the whole universe to attention. For whatever you are calling that name for, we be done. Don't you know? For whosoever, born again or not, that shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved from anything. That was why when you call his name by faith, when those demons were after you, he saved you. When you couldn't move yourself on the bed and those demons are pressing you down, your spirit, your soul, scream Jesus by faith. He saved you, didn't he save you? He did. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Child of God, Jesus' name is your spiritual currency. What did you hear me say, child of God? That name, Jesus, will buy you anything in the realm of the Spirit. Anything. That name will open any door for you. That name we close any door of evil against you. That name, we promote you. That name, we meet all your needs. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved from cancer. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved from poverty. Oh, call upon the name of the Lord and be saved from barrenness. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved from lack. Oh, call upon the name of the Lord and be saved from accident. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved from death. Oh, oh, call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Call him Call him, hey, hey, call upon the name of the Lord, and be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord, and be saved. Jesus, Jesus is not just a name. The way you call him, you, it's because you don't know. And the devil knows that you don't know. You don't know what you have in the name of Jesus. You've read it. I have joined heirs with Christ. You don't know today. Now you know. And I've told you, you cannot know anything in the spirit until you see it. Now you have seen. Say, I see. If you don't see, say, I want to see. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Over any unwanted situations of your life, Jesus is Lord. Over every unwanted barrenness, over whatever you call generational curses, Jesus is Lord. 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 Over poverty. Stop crying. Do the rituals. Call on his name. Everything is possible when you call on that name. That name is your spiritual currency. <laughs> Let no man trouble you because you bear the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the head of all principalities and powers. Nothing refuses Jesus. And wherever two or three are gathered 
in my name. Because I ordained the gathering. I am there. I am there in my name. If it is in his name, ah, you will begin to experience the power of the name of Jesus. So now when you are praying, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't want to go back, go there tonight, but let me, let me sow a seed. When you pray, you pray in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, what things we do, let us do it in the name of the Lord. You know the meaning of that? Whatever we are doing, let it be what the Lord commands. That is what it means to do in the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ said, I came in my Father's name. It means I came with the authority of my Father. He sent me and whatever I'm doing, I do because he commanded. That is what it means to come in somebody's name. Listen, when the president can't go or your boss can't go and he sent you, what does that mean? You went in the name of the president. Is that correct? Everything you saw Jesus Christ no, came sir. to do, God the Father would have been the one to do it. But he said, Jesus, go and do it. And Jesus came in his father's name. And when he was going, he said, even, even as the father sent me, even so, now I sent you. Go in my name. Go because I sent you. Go with my word. And they went everywhere preaching. And the Lord was walking with them. Confirming the word with signs following. I raised my case here tonight. The name is already working for you. We will continue from here tomorrow. God bless you. If you, if you were blessed, say a big hallelujah to the Lord. If something happened to your, sp your spirit, your entire life, say a big hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. So, from now, you can, you can even slang the name with revelation. When you want to mess the devil up, you can say, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. As long as you have the revelation, it will work for you. That name cannot fail. That name cannot fail. The name of Jesus, as you go, God will create situations for you to prove what you have learned. You will receive boldness like that of a lion in the name of Jesus. You will come back raised, with a raised dead. You will come back with miracles. You will come back with testimonies of healing. Speak to that situation. He said, in my name, they will cast out devil. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Go and prove the name of Jesus. Opportunity shall be created for you. Cast out the spirit of poverty. Cast out failure. Command the spirit of rebellion out of your children. Command every demon anywhere. Kick them left, right, and center. Come back with testimony. I release you with the power of God. I release the grace of God upon my life. Be a partaker. Go and be a fruit and kill the devil and put him to shame. Subdue him. You will return tomorrow with testimonies. I release angels to orchestrate you into miraculous now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.